Intermolecular forces, or IMFs, are incredibly important for biomolecules. In this video, we're going to focus on intermolecular forces that are important in the interaction between DNA molecules and drugs. Before talking about the interactions between DNA and drugs, I'd like to take a brief bit of time to review what the structure of DNA actually looks like. So DNA is a double helix, as is shown here, and each strand of this double helix is made up of nucleotides that contain one of four nitrogenous bases, a sugar and a phosphate. Those four nitrogenous bases are A for adenine, T for thymine, G for guanine, C for cytosine. And if you look at these DNA bases, the structures of T, G, A, and C are shown over on the right. And in this uh, diagram, the T and the G are on one strand of DNA, and the a and the C are on the second strand of DNA. And these individual strands come together to form this double helix by hydrogen bonding. If you're looking at A's and T's, there are two hydrogen bonds between those nucleotides. If you're looking at G's and C's, there are three hydrogen bonds between those, nucleo between those nucleotides. So hydrogen bonds are incredibly important intermolecular interaction in nucleic acids. If we take a look at the ways in which DNA can um, interact with drug molecules, um, there really are a number of different ways. So drugs can act on DNA as intercalating agents. Drugs can act on DNA as alkylating agents. Drugs can act in DNA as chain cutters. Drugs can act in RNA in a number of different ways. They can act on ribosomal RNA. Um, for example, antibiotics do. They can act on messenger RNA. For example, antisense um, RNA therapy does. Um, and another thing that drugs can do is they can mimic the structure of a nucleic acid building block so that drug gets incorporated into a growing DNA or RNA strand. And then once it gets incorporated, it terminates the chain and replication um, stops. So there's a number of ways that drugs can interact with nucleic acids. Some of these involve intermolecular interactions, and some of them involve covalent interactions. So what I'd like to do is give you one example of a way in which a drug can interact with um, DNA um, via intermolecular interactions. And so I'm going to focus on uh, intercalating agents. So an intercalating agent is um, a molecule that usually has planar ring structures that can slide right in between the bases of two strands of the double helix of DNA. And as they slide in between those two bases, they um, destroy the hydrogen bond between, bonding between those two bases, and they change the shape of the double helix. And by changing the shape and distorting the shape of the double helix, um, they perform their interactions. They perform their functions as drugs. And I'll show you that um, specifically um, in a minute. And so in this particular case, um, the intercalating agent here is shown as a, um, as a black disc, and this disc intercalates or slips right in between um, base pairs that would have made up this strand. And in doing so, you can see that the DNA double strand is distorted. So I'd like to focus on one DNA intercalating agent. Doxorubicin um, is an anti-cancer drug. Um, it's used primarily in Hodgkin's lymphoma. It is an intercalator. And if you look at the structure of doxorubicin, it has three planar rings. 
And these three planar rings are the rings that slide in between the base pairs of the double helix. Um, and in doing that, they break apart the hydrogen bonds that would normally be there, um, and they distort the helix. And so if we're going to look at how doxorubicin um, interacts by intermolecular interactions with a DNA helix, we've got these three um, rings, these three planar rings that are going to interact. These are primarily interacting by a nonpolar um, interactions, so induced dipole, induced dipole interactions. There's an OH group here and an OH group here. And these two OH groups are going to form hydrogen bonds with um, a guanine on one strand of the DNA. And then there's this NH3 group down here, positively charged NH3 group, that's going to interact with the phosphate backbone of a guanine on the opposite strand. And so in this way, we've got induced dipole, induced dipole interactions, we've got hydrogen bonded interactions, and we have ion-ion interactions, a whole suite of IMFs that are gonna be important in this intercalating um, relationship. And so if we look at what normally happens, uh, what normally happens when DNA is synthesized is shown up on the top um, in part A. And so what happens is that an enzyme called topoisomerase 2 um, binds to normal DNA and it relaxes the supercoil to allow replication of DNA and to allow DNA synthesis. What happens when doxorubicin intercalates into DNA is it distorts the structure of that helix and by distorting the structure of that helix, topoisomerase 2 is no longer able to um, bind to DNA um, and so it's not able to relax the supercoil and DNA synthesis doesn't happen. And so if, you, if you're function, if you want a drug to function as an anti-cancer agent, being able to reduce the amount of, of DNA that's synthesized is a, good, um, is a good goal. And if you look at how doxorubicin, doxorubicin actually does its intercalation, um, as I said on the last slide, it slides into the base pairs in the helix. And uh, what you can see is that those two OH groups that I was talking about that I showed you are interacting with the G on one of the strands. And then that NH3 group, that positively charged NH3 group, is interacting with the phosphate on a, guana, on a guanine on the, on the second strand. And so it's, it's, it's disrupting the hydrogen bonding that's normally there and changing its shape so that DNA lo no longer can be synthesized. So if we think about nucleic acids as drug targets, there's going to be many different ways that drugs can interact with nucleic acids. How a specific drug is going to interact with a specific nucleic acid target is going to depend on the drug and the target. Sometimes intermolecular forces will be used. And if intermolecular forces will be used, um, as the example that I've shown here, the whole suite of intermolecular forces can be used from um, from London dispersion forces all the way up to hydrogen bonding.